Hi everybody, um, in today's episode I'll be running through how to do the cam timing on a A-series engine. Right, first of all, first thing you need to do is set up your DTI gauge or dial test indicator to determine top dead centre on number one piston. So basically, you just, you'll see the gauge moving now. Now when it moves down and it starts going the other way, you need to move it back until it stops. There. If it's moving, either basically moves either way, and when it goes to a, a central point, that's when you've got top dead centre. Right, I'm going to move around now and show you how to set up the dial test indicator to actually do the cam timing. One thing I do need to mention is, when you've got the pistons top dead centre, you need to get a piece of wire, or similar, bolt it to the block, or anywhere, any place really, uh, put your cam timing disc on, and set it so basically that rod is facing to top dead centre. That's, that's really important. It doesn't matter where you put it on here, it's just a reference point, but as long as it's facing to the top, you'll be alright. Okay, as you can see, I've set up the dial test indicator now. I've put a push rod into the number one inlet, which is the second one in from the front of the engine. Set up the dial test indicator. You're still on top dead centre at number one. So basically what you do now is you spin the crank round, either way it doesn't matter, um, I normally go the way the engine runs, so anti-clockwise, watch the gauge, and you'll see it go round, keep going round, it'll keep going round, then it'll come to a stop, and it'll start going the other way, what you need is to go back until it stops dead there, okay? Now that's, that means the cam's at its highest lift on number one. So what you need to do now, it, again you can turn it either way. I'll go the way the engine turns normally. You tur turn it so that the, 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 the needle starts moving. Take it down to about the 8 o'clock position. Then turn it back round the other way again. Until it's about number uh, 5 before the, the zero then what you have to do well actually I'll stop the camera and start it again because it'll be easier so you got it back to five marks before the zero right now what you have to do you come round to the side of the engine you've got your marker there you need to count hang on a minute let's get some light on it you have to count across. So we're at there. 100, 110, 11, 12, 114, 114 there. So you need to write that down. Okay, what you need to do now, now you've got the first measurement, you turn the crankshaft the opposite way, watch the dial. It'll go back to the north, then it'll go back down again. Down to about the 8 o'clock position, doesn't really matter. Then bring it up to 5 notches before you get to the 0 again. Do a bit too far there. It's a bit of a pain to get this dead right. Okay, there you go. Right. Right, as you can see there, you've got 96. So you need to write that down. Okay, so what you do now, you take your first reading, which is 114 in this case, 96 on the second reading, you add those together, and then half it. So that cam is timed in at 105, because obviously 210 divided by 2 is 105. That needs to be changed, because I need, I need 100, 100 degrees on this camshaft. Okay, so basically what I've got to do now, remove this, take this off, and adjust these. I'll come back in a sec when I've took all this apart and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, right. I've undone 
days the sixth hex again and I need to find my little punch which I'll put down somewhere. Got it. Oh, I'll just give this a very very slight tap now because it's not very far out. That'll probably do it. I'll do, I'll pull this back together again and I'll come back to you in a sec. Right, last thing to do now, now the camp time is set up, I've set it back to top dead centre again. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark these two wheels, just with a sharpie. Put a mark there and a mark there. Because they, these, these uh, timing gears don't come with markings on them, so you have to make your own. You do. You don't have to, but I always do. Right, all I've got to do now is repeat the the plates. No more David. Hmm. That's better. <laughs> of course. Shocking. Can't believe I got that. And the amount of times I've had this on and off as well. <laughs> Bit of comedy there for you. If you do fit one of these sets, when you're putting the, time, the covers back on like this, don't do them up mega tight until you've got both of the covers on, in, well, in place, they can be a bit fiddly. This uh, particular setup is a SH engineering one, as you can probably see from the, the engraving there. But I believe that the Swift Tune one is exactly the same setup. Looks the same anyway. The only difference with this one is I've got the MED steel back plate on it with the um, modified retainers for the the front plate. It's a lot, a lot better. But obviously with stuff like this doesn't come cheap, it's the only problem. Okay, that's it. Well, that's how to do your cam timing. I'll just have a tidy off and come back in a sec. Okay, everybody, right, I've reset the timing again. Um, I won't going to show you it again because I showed you it before. Just undo the six cap head bolts on the, on the belt drive wheel. Uh, just give it a couple of taps. Uh, do it back up. Reset it back up to top dead centre again. And now I'm going to see what difference that's made. So you start off, watch the needle, it'll spin, 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 and it'll come to a stop there. 
take it down to about the eight o'clock position, doesn't really matter. Bring it back up to the fifth line before you get back to zero again. Have a look, see where it's staying. That's 91. So write that down. And go the other way. It'll go back to the zero, back down, so eight o'clock. Back down to the back up to the five again. Have a look, see what we got. 110. So we've got 110 plus 91. 201. Split that in two. That's 100.5 degrees. That will do me. This camshaft should be timed in at 100 degrees. You're never going to get half a degree back. And it might, won't make any difference anyway. Um, it all depends on what camshaft you're using in the engine. This particular engine has got a, a Piper 649 scatter camshaft in it and it needs to be timed in, in at 100 degrees. Uh, different camshafts need different timing um, settings. So basically if you've got something like a, an Evo 001 cam for instance from Mini Spares, they're normally about 100, I normally time them in at about 107 degrees. Uh, most of the Ken cams, unless you go for the real race spec ones, at about 106 degrees across the board, pretty much. Um, yeah, but if you if you do fit a, cam, uh, a performance camshaft to your A series engine, you must time it in properly. Otherwise, you will lose all of the benefits that you would have gained from fitting that high lift camshaft. So, um, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little little clip. Um, please consider subscribing if you haven't done done so already. And I'll, I'll, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.